Good afternoon. I'm looking for my monitor. <laughs> I guess I don't have a monitor, so I'm going to just have to go from memory. Good afternoon. <laughs> I need you. I need you. It's right up there with, I love you, I want you, I believe in you. It's a very simple phrase, but a very powerful one. And one that we use, and my colleagues and I have used, to build one of the most innovative organizations, communities in the world. What I want to do today is to share with you what one small innovative community can do to change the world so that you can imagine what a thousand of these communities can do for Hawaii. Ready? Cancer. If you kind of side eye and look to the person next to you, one of you in your lifetime will have cancer. The statistics are not good, but we're changing that. This is an image of a new type of drug delivery system that's being created right here in Hawaii. And what we've been doing is our materials team actually creates these nanostructures that our biomedical team actually takes and they kind of functionalize, a big word for they add an antibody to the tip of these kind of uh, nanostructures, they add a drug molecule, and they inject this, billions of these, what I think of as smart missiles, into the body. And the, and the dream is to actually get medications to go where they need to go to affect things without damaging other parts of the body. Um, we actually, recently I looked at images, we've been testing in animals, in mice, and we're actually looking at solid tumors like uh, breast, ca uh, breast cancer and prostate cancer. So they, they show me images of a mouse, and I actually wish I had it up here, is the mouse with this really nasty kind of cancer on its back being treated with this new type of drug delivery system, and over the next two weeks, literally, that cancer is gone. That technology will eventually save and change, save your life and actually change the statistics that we see today. Gunfire, gunshots. You hear it every day. Um, in the newspaper and the media, you see it here in Hawaii as well. We saw this early on in gunshots where snipers were killing U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq. We took a technology that we had developed for missile defense and actually applied it to uh, uh, sniper detection. This system is the most advanced hostile fire detection system being tested by the military today. It literally can detect a shooter in a tenth of a second. So what that means is before you ever hear the gunshot, we're actually spotted the shooter. And when you have that amount of time to do this, you can then deploy countermeasures. We can literally take out that bullet or that rocket that's coming at you, or we could deploy a Kevlar bag in the cabin that actually would catch that bullet and save your life. This technology was invented, like all the technologies I'm going to show you were invented here in Hawaii. And this one is actually created and invented on Kauai. Traumatic brain injuries is actually a very common problem by, you know, a bicycle accident, you hit your head, a snowboarding, skateboarding, just tripping and falling can, can give you a traumatic brain injury, especially if you hit the side of your head. The front and the back of our heads are very strong, but it's actually the sides that are very fragile. One of my childhood best friends was walking in his home one day. He tripped, he fell, he hit his head, and he hit the side of his head. And what started happening was bleeding started to occur in his brain. The blood has nowhere to go and started pooling in his brain. And after a few hours, it pressed on his brain so much that he actually collapsed. And after a few days, passed away. But the way we treat traumatic brain injuries is still the, is the same way we almost treated it 500 years ago that we learned from the Incas, by literally making a hole in your head to relieve the pressure. This is a revolutionary new way using lasers that will absorb through your skin and your skull without having to put a hole in your head, without burning you, and actually stop the bleeding in your brain. My dream car, someday, maybe. But even with my Prius, <laughs> I, I keep hitting my door against this wall. 
and somebody hits my car and I get dings in it. But the reality is I'm not going to get the little paint and I'm going to paint the thing in with the scratches. So I was telling our scientists one day, so they actually invented a new type of material. So our guys can invent anything. So I was telling them about this. So they actually created a totally new kind of material that we can add to any kind of paint. So in this case, automotive acrylic paints that turns the paint into a healable paint. So what that means is wherever there's scratches on my car, I can take this special light, I apply it to those scratches, and what happens in the paint is that the molecules in the paint actually release themselves and become fluid again and actually fill in the scratches. <laughs> drugs, illegal drugs. <clears throat> Big problem everywhere in the world, including here in the US and Hawaii. Drug production, illegal drug production, is another big problem. But how do you detect when somebody's making illegal drugs? It's very difficult. So the thought was, why don't we make micro robots, right? But you think about it, that's a pretty hard thing to do. Hardware, software, the electronics, the mechanics, the intelligence, the power systems necessary to make a micro ant robot to go into a facility to detect if somebody's making drugs is a very difficult thing. And, and if I was making drugs and I saw a bunch of hundred little ants that are robots, I'd probably go, something's wrong here. I'm probably going to get busted. So we looked at this and said, how do we harness the power of nature, in this case ants, to be those robots? So our teams created a material that they add to the ant. And so when the ant goes into, and thousands of ants go into a facility, a warehouse or a home, it will, the, the ants come into contact with different chemicals. And when they do that, they actually change color. They will fluoresce, or basically change color depending on the kind of chemical they come into contact with. So the question was then, well, how do you see these, how do you see the ants if they're in the house? So we did another thing, again, studying how ants behave. We kind of added something to the ant to make them at some point summit or climb to the highest point in a structure, in this case, maybe a warehouse, so these ants would climb to the top of this structure, and then we would actually fly a helicopter or a sensor that would then look down on that facility and look at the ants, and based on the color, tell us what kind of chemicals they've come into contact with. And this was so successful, and this was so successful that we actually did it with crickets. And so this, the chirping sounds of the cricket, right, changes depending on the type of chemical it comes in contact with. Now, that was just, 5% of all the things that we do in the community that I'm part of. That's just 5%. But I wanted to show you what, what one small community that's innovative, what it can do, because I think what happens a lot of times is we don't believe that we can do this kind of work in the middle of the Pacific, far away from Silicon Valley and other places. But we are doing it here today. Right? But the question is, so how do we do it? So I wanted to show you really quickly how we do it, and then I'm going to talk about really probably the most important part, which is the people part and how we cultivate that community. So we always talk about pain in our organization. When you come around our community, you will hear us talking about what's the big problem? What is the problem in the world that's not being solved? What is the toughest problem we can go after? We talk about people, and I'm going to cover this in a little bit. The other one is capital. Of course, we need funding. We have even our own internal R&D fund. Capital and funding is just another way for us to determine what are the priorities of the world, good or bad. You know, I wish more monies would go into certain things. But this term helps us determine some of the priorities that the world feels. And then lastly, this idea of letting go. It's more of this concept of being open to the, the pains of the world, to the new people, to new opportunities. And a really quick example is, everyone knows, hopefully, the, the, the story of Kodak. An amazing story of a, of, a, of a company that dominated the film industry. But by 2012, had gone bankrupt. And what's so relevant and so ironic and so amazing about the Kodak story is that they invented the future. They invented digital photography in 1975. But it was bankrupt by 2012. So the idea is to not let our strengths as a community, as a community, become our weakness. So people, so this is the part to me that is most interesting, is, 
is the people part is what makes everything work in our community. It is what brings everything together in the community that we're a part of. And when we look at people, and we, we, we look at cultivating people, we look at them from a standpoint, I think, of skills and experiences and character. The character really is about the values of a person. And I want to kind of do a compare and contrast thing. In an organization, human resources looks for, most times for the skills and experiences of people. They're looking to fill the role of a biologist, right? So they have a job description and then they start filtering out all the people and looking for a biologist. But what happens when the next Albert Einstein walks through the door and they're using that to filter, right? What's gonna happen is they're gonna filter out this superstar person because they're looking for a biologist. So what's really important, I think, in our communities and what we do is you have folks that are talent scouts or talent agents. And they're working from a set of no requirements. They are not even looking at what the needs are. All I'm looking for is, is somebody who's a superstar that I really don't even know they're a superstar yet. Right? And, and I'm going to give you an example. Here's a superstar. This is, to me, one of my first true experiences of discovering and finding somebody who's a superstar. This is Dr. Vinod Vidu. And some of you know him as Dr. V. I met Vinod back in 2006 because I was volunteering to help the university. And Vinod, Dr. V, made a presentation about his nanotechnology lab at the university, which I was very impressed with. I thought, oh, this is really cool. I want to go there. So I went to the university. And after 30 minutes of Vinod giving me the tour of their lab, I realized that was what was most impressive wasn't the lab. It was actually this guy. He was what was impressive. And I, and, I, and I couldn't put my finger on it. Sometimes, you know, you meet somebody, or people, and you just go, there's something really, really special about this person. So for the next six months, I spent a lot of time with Vinod. We actually worked on a project together, and that's how we really, I really got to know that this guy is a superstar. We actually together created the world's first nano resin surfboard. So we worked together, and, it, and, and in that process, he taught me about nanotechnology. I could spell it, spell it, but I knew nothing about it. And so over six months, Vinod and I, he taught me nanotechnology. He totally changed my view of what we would do as a business. So after six months, I went to my boss, and I said, you know in that movie where it says, you know, remember one word, plastics? I said, remember one word, nanotechnology. It's going to change the world. It's going to change everything, and it can change who we are and what we do as, a, as an organization, as a community. And so we literally took a chance. And you know, here's the amazing part. We did not have a, we did, we did not have a job for, for him. We literally created a job and role for this guy because he was a superstar. Now, what also makes him a superstar is that it's not that he's just really, really smart. Is that when you're with Vinod, and he's normally probably the smartest guy in the room, What's really special about him is that he makes you feel like you're the smartest person in the room. But how do you spot, how do you spot a superstar? Right? How do you spot these superstars? It's really hard. They're like in disguise. They're actually all in this room. They're probably the person sitting next to you. You can't see them. They're like, they're like ordinary people. In fact, if somebody acts like a superstar, then I'm pretty sure they're not a superstar. <laughs> That's my rule. So, it's just the way it is. They are normally not in the center of the room. They're on the fringes of the room. It's really hard. But you know, there's one nasty habit that these superstars have. I don't say nasty habit, but they have a habit. And you know what the habit is? They like to help people. They can't say no. And so where you find, my secret to all of you, if you want to find superstars, is do community service. That's where I find these superstars. That's how I found Vinod, and that's how I found um, and that's Vinod doing the Dr. V show, is another gentleman, uh, Dr. Glenn Nakafuji. I met Glenn many, many years ago helping Lawrence Livermore National Labs with their internship program for Hawaii kids. And I met Glenn doing that program, and then many years later, as I was working on another pro bono project to figure out how do we help soldiers suffering from the most severe cases of PTSD, Glenn stood up and said, you know what, I want to help you. Now, the, the point is, too, is I met the superstar like years ago. I didn't realize Glenn was a superstar until we started working together again. And that's when I realized that this guy 
If he was willing to use his weekends and evenings to work on this project, that's the kind of guy who has the values that I want as part of my community. But how do we actually attract these people? Right? Glenn Nakafuji, Dr. Glenn Nakafuji, was a senior guy at a national lab. He didn't have to go anywhere. He had it set, getting paid very, very well, had it all set. Dr. V, coming out of university, he already was a famous guy. He was famous already back then in that community and had offers from GE and everybody in the world. So how do we actually get those kinds of folks to become part of our community that can change everything for us? I liken it to, to painting. Our community, we are the canvas. And our canvas is really big. We have, our limitations are legal, moral, and you can only do things that your mother would be proud of. And the artists are the superstars, are those people that we bring to our community, and they have an unlimited canvas. And the paints and brushes is all the other people and all the resources and facilities that are part of our community. Unfortunately, a lot of other communities, they give, the, they give these superstars a canvas that's about that big, one brush and some black paint and say, knock yourself out, paint a masterpiece. It just doesn't happen that way. It doesn't work. So we give our people that ability to paint and put their vision into, into our community by giving them this big canvas. I need you to help me to build, I would like us to consider building 1,000 of these innovative communities here in Hawaii. You're already part of communities, and it may be part of it is just redesigning or just upping the community that you're part of a little bit more in terms of innovation. And so if we just recap what I've talked about, the first thing I would say is, here's some suggestions on how you could even make your communities a little bit more, a little bit more of whatever you want. Is first, do community service. Do more community service. You will find your superstars in that community. Be a talent scout. Don't filter out people. You're going to find these, these superstars, right? Again, you know actually the superstars, or you've already met them. You just can't recognize them yet. Work on projects together. Take the passion and, and the vision of what these superstars are and align them to what your community mission is. And a lot of times we kind of say, this is what I want to do as a company, and then we look for people, but we can't make it work. Drive everything from the superstars that you can find out there. Align them with the missions uh, and the tough problems that you're trying to ch solve in your communities. And lastly, create white space. Create these canvases so these individuals, these superstars, can bring their skills, their talents, their vision and their passion, and paint you masterpieces as part of your community. I need you. Thank you.